Bowens told us last week she was staying away from social media, but today she returned making five Instagram posts about her daughter. But Instagram users are in a tizzy about her previous post about Darian Vets, her ex fiance Memories of Malia posted on her mother's Instagram photography page today. The caption saying in part, quote, Although you were taken so early, I am honored to know that only you knew how much I loved you. And no matter what, no giant can take that away. Next to the five posts about Malia is this post. Darian rapping with his brother Joe. That's followed by a dozen or so additional photos of Darian. And Instagram users are reacting. Quote, you might want to delete Darian's pictures off here, don't you think? And quote, please tell me why a man involved with the disappearance of Malia won't be deleted off your page. The response from Britney's page, quote, no, not yet until I find out. Hi guys, more on the Malia Davis case. As we all know, the body has been found of Malia Davis, but not confirmed. But um, articles and the description is matching. <clears throat> and Tim Miller, <clears throat> more or less confirmed it on national TV. And they went to um, Arkansas so fast, chartered a plane to bring Malia back to Texas. Um, it was all planned. They already knew it was her uh, because why else would they have brought her body home if it was not her? But it's not confirmed. Um, so may she rest in peace. Now, there's lots of things out there that's been happening. Interviews, you know, with the sister, the half-sister. Uh, as you know, the father of Darian and friends strangers um, speaking up about the case and us YouTubers passing on videos about this case to keep this case alive which we did she is home one month after and she will get her burial she deserves that's for sure, from the public who love this little girl. Our hearts go out to this little girl. It's all about Malia. Don't forget that, guys. All about Malia. She didn't get her love she deserved in life but she is sure going to get it in death. We will talk about a little bit about everything, like little recaps, updates, and stuff like that. Um, Brittany's sister, Natasha, um, they share the same father. And she has been speaking out about her sister and the family. They have been getting a lot of backlash. They have been getting threats 
they have been getting hate. And probably why is because the public, people like me, you, can't quite understand how the family would let this happen. But it seems like they were in the dark. They were lied to. You know, they said she fell. She, they said this. They said that. And, of course, they believed it. And, of course, they didn't know everything that was going on. Even her sister didn't know about how much CPS was involved in her sister's life with her children, her niece and nephew. Brittany also has lied to her too, not just to the public, to the world. She has lied to her family. And according to her family, she put Darion on a pedal stool. He could do no wrong. She did not put her daughter on a pedal stool. As we know, allegations, our opinions, that this little girl was only four years old and suffered more than any of us will ever know in four years of her life. She has gone through all this trauma. And not only surgeries, but abuse. A slap here, a slap there, a throw here, a throw there. Blaming this little girl for things that she has no control of and didn't ask for. This little child didn't ask to be born, but she was born. And she sure was not protected by the one and only mother who should have protected her the most. She gave birth to this child. She gave birth to this child alone. We heard her sad story. She was in the hospital alone, no family, no friends. Well, I come from another country and I have no family here and things like that. Who cares if you gave birth alone? Take the journey alone then, take the journey alone. Because that is your child, your blood, your flesh and blood. Seems like she treats strangers better than she did her own child. And we don't even know what the other children went through. I mean, the CPS is being hush-hush about that. We don't know if her older brother was abused the same way, had injuries, a slap on the head here and there, or the little baby. We don't really know. Why target one little girl? Was this mother so jealous of her beautiful daughter? Or she just didn't care? A man came first in her life. Now, there might be lots of reasons why she stuck it out with this man. Fame? Because apparently he likes to sing. And maybe he was going to be famous one day. He raps. And of course, he was cheating. And who knows how long he's been cheating for. We sure know he had a girlfriend. He was cheating on Brittany. And she knew it deep down in her heart. But she stayed with this man. Even though she had evidence. Now we don't know how long she knew about this. Or she was suspecting this of happening. We don't know that. All the details will probably come out later. About the relationship, what went on in this relationship, why they both stayed together. We hear all the rumors that Darion did most of the parenting 
and Brittany sat around, I guess. The way they talk is he picked her up, dropped her off, did this with the kids, did that with the kids, cleaned house, did laundry, uh, probably did some cooking. I don't know. And it seems like he, he was the breadwinner. And Brittany has stated that herself out of her own mouth. But then again, she has stated a lot of things out of her mouth proven to be a lie now once a liar always a liar never start out with a lie especially to the public never start out with a lie be truthful because as a lot of people saying every relationship has hard times everybody goes through this their husband's cheating, their husband, wife's trying to kill them, uh, they're abusing the kids, they've killed the kids. You know, there's a lot of people out there that have been in that situation. And yeah, there's people that are down and kept down and can't get ahead. Yeah, we understand that part. We understand life's journeys. People have hardships. I've had hardships. But I just had to keep going. Keep going and you'll get somewhere. Give up and you're going nowhere. The sister Natasha uh, says that Brittany came earlier in April because her father died on the 11th. So she did go back to see her father, but not sure how many days she stayed for that time. But who was watching her kids then? Where did she get the money from then? So family and friends helped her get a ticket back then. And her sister said that she seemed okay. You know, she was talking and she opened up about her situation her relationship with Darion and she also confirmed that Brittany was at her father's funeral that has been confirmed her sister tried to reach out to people I don't know if it was QX um um the DA or whoever, the detectives, the police, whoever was involved. But she was not getting no answers, no return calls, because she knew some stuff was a, a lie. And also, you know, the world was talking about the family. Where are they? Where were they? And you can't blame them for Britney's troubled past and her life she led because they would dearly love to have seen this girl more often than they did and they were expecting Malia to be there with her mother and they would have paid for her to come because they dearly wanted to see Malia or the kids you know all three of their children her children and we just don't know why she never took her children when she probably had the opportunity to take them out of state to visit family. It wasn't like she couldn't. But then again, it probably was because she couldn't. No, because now I think about it. The children were not, she did not have full custody of these children. So now I can probably understand why she may not have been able to take Malia or any of her children out of the state because they are a ward of the court. They are in CPS custody. She, she has like primary custody, but the CPS 
She can't just up and go where she wants with those children. That's what I'm saying. So maybe that's why she could not take her children out of the state. She needs permission. And Brittany has told her sister about the CPS, like I said. But she didn't tell her the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Her sister can't understand why she wouldn't tell her the whole truth. But I think her sister's really realizing that her sister is nothing but a liar. And she can't be trusted because she even lied to her own sister. Even if they weren't close, this is her sister. Her sister would have stuck up for her and gone to the ends of the earth, as you say. But once you start out in a lie, they don't know what the truth is anymore. Because they have watched you on national TV. They've heard what you said. You didn't defend yourself against these allegations that were being made against you on live TV and interviews. You talked about yourself and there was nothing about Malia. There's no love there about Malia and how heartbroken you were. So all your actions and lack of, you got people talking something's not right something is terribly wrong here she has no emotions she's a dark character but then again there's a lot of people out there that don't show their emotions so look at the other picture but as time goes on she don't change and then, as we know, when she did live, a live Facebook with her friends, whoever they are, they don't even seem to know her. They don't know her. Some only met her a week ago. Now, they truly aren't your friends. They don't know you. They don't know you from Adam. They only know you as much as we know you. And that's the truth. So these people speaking up and taking comments and reading them out and being so disgusting about it has only put her in a darker light because she is heard in the background not crying, not pleading for her daughter. Calm as day and having a laugh this ain't no joke. Facebook Live was to answer people's questions because you guys decided to do that. That's on you. But be a little bit more professional about it and serious because this is serious. Any person, it doesn't have to be a child that goes missing. That's somebody's loved one. That's somebody's loved one who cares dearly about them. This ain't no joke. This ain't no laughing matter. It's just quite disgusting how you got these people, I'm not blaming everyone, to speak on your behalf once again. Yeah, you, you didn't have to get on live chat, but you could have been behind that camera answering every single question. It's a yes or a no, or it's I can't answer. And you could have done it in a decent way, more humane way. Now, now the public don't like you even more. See, you're digging a, a, digging a bigger hole for yourself. A bigger hole into the dark tunnel. You should never have gone about it that way. Yes, we would like answers, but you didn't have to answer every question, but you could have been more emotional. You could have had more feelings and you could have just answered the questions politely 
no matter what the hate, because you know you were going to get the hate. And that's hard to take. But it was your actions that got the world to hate you as much as they do. Your careless actions have caused the public to react the way they're doing. And people aren't just going to believe somebody's words because they say, I had nothing to do with it. Because you know what? Every criminal says, I didn't do it. It was an accident. I didn't mean it. Yep. Now, we all know that. So you should have expected the hate and not the love. Now, not everybody hates. They're hating the situation. That's the problem. They're hating this little girl went through what she did. And she was not protected. She wasn't even protected by the courts. She wasn't protected by the CPS. Their hands are tied. You see, you have to prove that somebody is being abused. And it takes, well, by the looks of things, it takes a person to die. And not only could they not prove it 100%, but they knew it was going on. And they gave you chance after chance after chance. And you took those chances and blew it. You don't get no more chances. You're not going to get no more chances with these kids. And God forbid if you ever do, God have mercy on the CPS and the courts. Because... Your chance is gone to be a mother to these children. Your chance to be a mother to Malia has gone. She's in the arms of the angels now because of you not protecting her. You are the protector. It doesn't matter. You are the protector. You are the mother. You go to the ends of the earth. You protect your kids. Now, he might have got a frying pan over the head or something, but that's good. That's what you should have done. But no, you gave him a chance. So you say, these allegations have not been proven against either one of these two parents yet. I just have to say that we are having our thoughts and our opinions, and it is alleged at this time but we know what's going on because you can't fool us and this is just our opinions and we can have our opinions just like those people outside the courtroom they had their opinions they let her have it just like those people supporting Malia outside the CPS headquarters you know the courtroom the social services in um, meetings they are outside waiting for them protesters now let's hope that Texas Houston makes Malia's law no child should be abused you don't there's a new law coming out to protect dogs the owners that abuse animals can no longer own a dog or animals uh, does that include humans too? Yes, it should. Number one, humans should come first before animals. But it seems like animals get more rights than children. In my opinion, it's just looking like that. There's more law passed for animals. And that that is... All farm animals, cows, horses, pigs, you know, dogs, cats, animals have more rights. And well, they should have rights. But as a human, as a child, should be number one. Now, children do get hurt. Yes, they do. We're not perfect. Children always get hurt. And it's truly an accident. They do fall, hit their head, scratch their leg, break their arm, legs, whatever. 
that does happen, but that doesn't mean everybody's abusing their children. And it's not one size fits all. But this is... This case, this child has been through the works for a few years. This isn't one thing. And that's what we know of. What about everything we don't know about? How many times will she hit across the head? A slap on the head, a flip in the ear. How much of this slapping and brain injury this little girl was getting, being smacked in the head? Who wants to keep slapping your kid in the head? Don't you know you can get brain damage from that? Don't you know? And why do you have to keep hitting your kids? You don't even have to hit your kids. My God, she's only four years old. If your child has done something wrong, they get punished, but they get time out or they get sent to their room with no TV. You know, you find something they really like. You go say, you sit in that room for 15 minutes and think about what you've said and done. Do you think that was right? You know, explain to them why they're being punished. But that doesn't mean you abuse them when you're punishing them. They have to learn to follow rules. But beating your child up and abusing them is not going to teach them. It's not going to teach them from right from wrong. There's just no way in hell this girl got all this trauma from a fall off a table, off her chair. And that's the story. I don't really know the clear story because apparently... What I've heard is it didn't happen at Brittany's home. The fall happened at her mother's home. But that's just another story out there where this happened. Now, you know, what happened in between? What happened in between? It led up to her surgery. It led up to that little brain, you know, blood outside the brain. It takes a lot of force and doctors know best. You know, doctors didn't go to school for nothing. They know, they see a lot of trauma every single day. They know what trauma is. They know how much force it takes to do certain injuries. You can't fool a doctor, but apparently the courts didn't care what the doctor said, or they couldn't prove it. But just by their allegations, should have been enough. A word of a doctor against abuse. Which one would you take? Yeah. We take the trauma doctor's word for it. The injuries to her were in such force that it just couldn't happen the way they said it happened. That's as far as they got. That's as far as the doctors got. And they go, oh, okay then. Well, she's got brain surgery. Well, let's, we'll just take them back to the parents so she's going to be abused a bit more. Now, there has been a spokesperson out to the community and she has stated that Malia should never have been taken back to that home. They should have waited a few years till she had time to heal. The healing process to her brain. Because as we see, Malia was not wearing her helmet. There is only one child seat in the car when it was found. There's a lot that this child was not getting care. It's proof that she was not getting care. Because number one, doctor said she must wear this helmet for at least 12 months to 24 months. Her little head can't take any more trauma. And there she is in the picture, running. She could have fell at any moment and hit her head on the concrete 
hit her head on the grass that could have been a rock there. A any moment, she could have hit her head. And she had no helmet on to even protect her head. Now QX is saying that Darion said it was an accident. It was an accident. Now he's not saying who did what. But now the word is out that Darion didn't even say that. He didn't say it was an accident. But I don't know what Darion said. Seems like he didn't say nothing then. Well, he must have said something because they found the body. Now, who was talking? Did QX really go to the prison and talk to Darian in person? Well, right now, there's no proof of that. There's no proof. Now, he has been getting insider information. Insider information. Now, his brother has visited Darion. So number one, he could be relaying a message to him through his brother. Now, all calls or anything is supposed to be recorded and documented. So all visitors that came to that prison, no matter if it was visitation day or whatever day, you have to sign in and sign out. They don't care who you are. Even if you're the nurse there, the doctor there, they have to sign in and sign out and everybody that works there. So, you know, the proof will be there on the visitors list. Or we demand to see his signature on that day. And what time? Because apparently he went there about 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock in the morning. Because, you know, the Lord or something told him to, to be there. No, it's not the Lord that told you or anybody else, your imaginary friends. You had insider information. Whether it be from his brother, whether it be from an inmate. They got himself in trouble and got himself inside that jail. Oh yeah, that's happened. Oh yeah, some people have caused enough crime to get themselves in prison because they want to get information. Now, I don't know if Darian is in a cell by himself, isolated, or is he in a pod amongst some inmates in there? Because it's only a jail, it's a holding jail until you're released or till you go to trial. It's a holding cell. So, you know, don't think these inmates are your friends. Don't think they're your buddies. Some people in there want something for something. And who knows? how he got this information because nobody could be that lucky on the same day this all went down it all went down in one day within hours within hours she was found Malia Davis the sweet little girl that's an angel now innocence is gone that all went down. Well, this just isn't making sense neither. But what does make sense? So, we don't know how he really truly got this information. But, however he did it, whoever let him do what he did for the love of Malia, we thank him for that. We thank whoever gave him this information, the info, anything that led to Malia being found is a blessing. We, we are glad that happened. But we just don't know how it all went down. 
Did anybody break any laws? Do you know what I mean? Did anybody let anybody slide? You know, sometimes you have to do what you got to do to get a missing person's body back home. You do anything, even if it breaks the law. And now, that confession could be gone, not valid. But it doesn't matter about his confession. His confession to what? It was an accident? Okay, let that go. No, it was deliberate. <laughs> it's not an accident. It was deliberate. How about that one? But that doesn't mean you're going to get out of jail for free. As soon as they get the DNA test and results and confirm that this is Malia, you are going to be charged with a capital murder, which carries the death penalty. Oh, yeah. Think about that one while you're sitting in jail. You're not going to get away with murder. Now, whatever your case is going to be, what is your case going to be? Um, insanity plea? You snapped? I must be insane? That ain't going to wash. That ain't going to wash. So forget that one. Too much has been going on in that house behind those four walls. Too much has been going on. Too many secrets. Too many secrets that people just don't believe. Not even your own family. You cannot have these accidents happen like this for no reason. It just don't happen. And apparently, Brittany wasn't being abused by her mother and was never in uh, um, foster care. She spoke out and said that. But then again, she could be lying. Who's lying? We don't know who's lying. But you know what? That would make... You can easily prove if she was ever in the CPS care as a child. She was ever in foster care. That could be easily proved. Yeah, they might be sealed. But that's easily proved. They have documentation of that. Okay, Brittany? Mm -hmm. Or anybody involved? So the statements about that, whether it's true or not, can be proved 100%. Now, Brittany told her sister about her terrible life she had. Now, she told her sister that. And her sister felt really bad for her because she had a bad mother. Now, this is Brittany saying this about her terrible life. Now, was she saying that to get sympathy? To be loved? To be felt sorry for? To get a friend? You don't need to lie to your sister about your abuse or whatever you went through as a kid. Oh my God, we all went through it as a kid. You know, the laws were different back then. We all got a smack across the head sometimes. Not abused though, or hit with a stick or something. We got disciplined. We got sent to bed for a week, not, not 15 minutes. You know, I remember getting punishment for doing God knows what. I didn't even do a lot, okay? For a week, straight home from school, in your room. In them days, we don't have TV. So that was the kind of punishment we got. But abuse? We got to label abuse. There's a label for it. Getting disciplined is not always abuse. There's a difference. Beating your kid day after day. Brain injuries. Cuts. Broken bones. That's abuse. 
starving your kid and tying them up and putting them in the cage. That's abuse. We can't label abuse, in, you know, because you got in trouble and you couldn't go out to play for a week or, you know, you got yelled at. Oh, my God. You got a slap here and there. No. But, I mean, most a lot of people don't do that to their children anymore. There's different ways to discipline your children. But abuse is never allowed. You don't need to abuse your kids. My God, these kids are only kids. They're only little. They're learning right from wrong. And you as a parent or the person that is in, in charge of these children, you're the one that's supposed to be teaching them from right from wrong. I mean, I've watched many videos, many videos of secret cameras, you know, of daycares and schools and, you know, for little children and babysitters in their home and the kids have been abused, slammed down, killed. I mean, you name it, they've been done. They've been given meth in their bottles. They've been drugged up. They've been beaten to death because they've been on drugs. And it's not always drugs that does it. They've just been beaten to death. We've seen many of those. Because people have cameras now. Everybody has a camera. Everybody has a phone. Everybody has security these days of some sort in their home. Neighborhood watch. Now, I don't know how much yelling was going on in that home. If the neighbors upstairs to the side of them heard anything. But I'm sure the police have been there and questioned them. What have they heard? What have they seen in the last few months or whatever? Something like that. Or since they've been living there. You know, what did they see? Interactions. You know, stuff like that. I'm sure that they have been there and interviewed and taken people's surveillance cameras and still photos. You know, that's all been done. Mark my words. That has all been done. But it's not going to be released. They're making a case. And sometimes it takes a long time to make a case. Now, they could be, as I speak, making a case against Brittany. Now, what charges are they going to bring her on? Yeah, they're looking into her. She's not, she's not innocent. She's not been proven innocent. She hasn't been proven guilty, but she sure hasn't been proven innocent. Now, remember she said about, this is her in, you know, QX, and her about the photo. And we found that a little strange because even though her child, Malia, Malia, the little sweetheart, has been abused and had brain surgery and God knows what else going on the CPS, um, she never finished with him because he abused her daughter or her children. Um, it's because he was cheating. And she told her sister that he was cheating with another female. And of course, the picture came to mind, you know, of Darian, and it was on her phone. But we don't even know if she took that picture or if it was even sent to this girl. Was it even sent to this girl or was it her taking the pictures? You know, some people take pictures of their partner and she's twisted it. But she says she never said that. You see, it's QX that said that. And he's seen it, and she said, he's gay. Now, 
That came out after the fact. But what she said to him, what she said to Darian, we don't know. We don't know what they were fighting over exactly. Were they fighting over this picture that he had sent this woman? Or were, or did he say, we're done, I'm finishing with you? Or she say that she's done, but she made a comment about the engagement ring. Now, if you're going to finish with somebody, see, this is what makes me think she never said that. Because unless she contradicts herself, she has to watch every word she says because maybe she should stay off of social media. Because to be a liar, you better be a good one. The engagement ring. She said, it's over. I'm not marrying you. But she didn't take that engagement ring off. Oh no. She didn't give that engagement ring back to him neither. And the reason why she didn't do that was she had to hold back on giving the ring back was because he was the breadwinner. Oh yeah, he was the breadwinner. So she couldn't finish with him. She couldn't break off the engagement and she couldn't give him the ring back because at this time, He's the breadwinner. Yes. That's why she's still sticking up for him. She's still holding out hope. Now she's delusional. Oh yeah. There's something wrong with this woman. Even after her child goes missing. Now her children is her child is presumed dead. Her child was brought home from Arkansas. Back to Houston. On a private jet. Yes, guys. She was brought home on a private jet. And in that jet were people that loved her. And I bet you their hearts were broken. But you know what? She was being loved. She was being brought home in such a way by a private jet. How about that? She had a first class ticket. Yeah, that's how we treat the dead. That's how we love them. That's how she should be treated first class but only in death did she get that only in death has she got so much love from people that don't even know her but think of her as their daughter and we say her name out loud Malia, Malia, Malia yeah we say her name out loud and give her the love she deserved that she should have got in life but only in death she has the hearts of the world and she's going to get her burial she's going to get her funeral and she's going to be loved and she's going to have thousands of people are gonna support this little girl till she is laid to rest oh yeah yeah your daughter is famous now famous for all the wrong reasons and you made that possible Brittany you made that possible and we're gonna blame you the most it's because you're supposed to be the protector you are the mother of this child. You should have been there to protect her at all costs. Even the love of your life. You should protect your child from this abuse. Alleged abuse. 
and it will all be proven. Allegations are hard to discredit. You are a marked woman in the CPS world in the courts. You are marked for life, and in the public's eyes, you are marked for life. I mean, I don't believe that people should be knocking down your door and giving you hell, like they did Casey Anthony's parents. But you sure can't walk the streets like you used to. You sure can't go out shopping like you used to, or wherever you used to go. You can't even go to work no more. I guess. I don't know. I don't know if you are or not. You are a marked woman. You are probably the most hated woman in America right now. You see, karma comes back to bite you in the arse. And apparently, there is no love lost between the sisters, because it seems like they're not talking. They're not talking because of whatever reasons. You know, all this, all these allegations, all what's going on, all the lies, deception, all the mistrust, and all the hate that her sisters get in the family members.、Um, oh yeah, everybody's in fact,、uh, you know, been affected by this. And they are trying to live their life, and they can't hide. They don't want to hide. They have nothing to hide from, except the fact that people believe that family could have done more. Well, yeah, we all say that after the fact, but if they truly didn't know, and things were kept from them, and they don't even live in the same state. How the hell are they gonna know everything? They only know what you tell them. Now, if Britney just told her, "Oh, I think he's cheating on me," they're not gonna think, "Oh, well, the kids are getting abused."、Uh, I mean, that's okay. Leave him then. You know, don't mess with a cheating man. You know, secrets, family secrets, destroy a family, and that is the true word spoken. Secrets. Now she did say from the time she doesn't see her very much, but by the time she came to there early April, until the second visit at the end of April, that she see a big change in her demeanor. She see that, but she said she can see it now. She can see it now, but she could not tell you whether. She did it, or did harm to her daughter. She does. Well, she's like us; can't prove it. And Brittany can't prove what she was doing in that home alone with her daughter. Now, this is why she's not off the hook. She's not off the hook because she had time to kill her daughter. Not saying she did it. Just my opinion, alleged. They both had time. She had time in that home. Now she said at one time, she can prove that she didn't kill her daughter. That little time she was in the home, you know, the time she said she didn't know her daughter was in the home. Uh, we find that hard to believe. Looking at Malia coming into the home, she was wide awake. She was kind of trotting behind, but she was wide awake. How could she possibly get in the house? Go to the room, be quiet, not say a word, not go to the bathroom, not ask for a drink, not go to the toilet. You know all those number of things that kids do: jumping on the bed, whatever she was doing. Put the TV on. You know, what does she do? Just jump into bed in silence. Is that how she was taught? Is that how the abuse went? She would come in, shut her mouth, don't say a word, and she didn't. She just lay there, not do nothing. Yeah. Otherwise, I just don't know how you could not know your kid was in the house. I don't care if they were in there for half an hour, twenty minutes. You know your damn kids are in the house. We all know that.
We all know that. And you don't shut the doors on a little kid's room. You don't never shut their door. You always got it open. Because they can play. But you got to be watching them as well. Because they get up to mischief. Oh yeah. You never know if they're trying to get out the window or not. You know how kids are. They be doing all kinds of crazy stuff. When you don't watch them. So I just find that hard to believe. But... That's what we think. That's the way we think, you know, because we're good mothers and we watch our children. But the ones that abuse them, you know, maybe they act different. Uh, We sure know they do. So the time scale of her leaving to the airport is a little bit, a little bit different than it was before. Because we were thinking she had an hour and a half in that home because we thought she left at 9.30, but now Brittany said she left at 8.30 in the morning, which only gave her half an hour with that child alone. But that's not to say that's a lie, neither. We just can't... We don't have the proof, like video or a still picture, to say when she left that home, because she's not on the camera. Unless she is, and the police know what time she left, so she might be telling the truth. But we don't know yet. If that is true, she left the home at 8.30. Um, It was just a domestic um, flight, and it was going to take her a few hours to exchange planes or get a ride from one airport to the other, so... It was going to be a few hours until she got her to her destination. Um, but she said she leaves. She says the airport's an hour away from where she lives. Because she also stated the airport's an hour away from where her mother lives. So that makes sense. She's an hour away from the airport. 8.30, 9 o'clock, give and take traffic. Checks in. But you know what? There's not much to check in in because uh, that's not going to take you five minutes to check in. You're not even checking in luggage. You're only going there for a couple of days. So you got some hand luggage. So you just check in, get your ticket, go down wherever you're going and wait for your plane. And hopefully and delayed. Seems like the plane wasn't really delayed going there but a lot of planes don't like to be delayed cost money so her flight leaves I don't know what time it left 11 30 10 to 12 in the morning but my myself I think she got to the airport a little early but um But you have to be there one to two hours ahead, at least one hour ahead. Because sometimes, you know, airports do more security than ever these days. So, well, anyway, she left and got on the plane, Charlotte, and then went from there. But this has all been confirmed that she did get on that plane. It's just her time leaving in the morning and also her getting home her plane was delayed but as for her we asked her well somebody asked her not me personally but you know I say we because we are united Um, a question was asked her When did you talk to your children while you were away? When? When? What day? Do you know what I mean? Simple question. I'm not answering that. I'm not answering that question. Her sister asked her that. Her sister assumed she had talked to her kids. Assumed she had talked to her kids. And you know why she's not answering that? 
she never talked to her children. Why don't you just say you never talked to your children? We know you didn't talk to your children. You never talked to your children. You were just talking to Darion. You were just texting Darion, the guy that you finished with, the guy that abused your children, the guy that was cheating on you. Remember, you finished with him. So. But or did you? Did you? Was that all a lie? The fight was made up. You know, it's all a made-up story. Yeah, he's cheating on you, but you can live with that. You know, you can live with that because he's the breadwinner. He brings the money in. He brings the money in, but you can put up with that. But you never talked to your kids, did you? Especially Malia. You never talked to Malia. In fact, you probably never talked to none of your kids. And you must have been talking to Darion. You must have been talking to him. And he said, "Yeah, they're fine. Everything's good. It's all good." With all your suspicions of what's going on, you didn't say, "Get them on FaceTime, get them on live Facebook." You know, like you've been doing lately on social media. You mean? No, you didn't. You didn't do nothing. You didn't do nothing. So, you didn't answer that question is because you never actually spoke or saw Malia, especially Malia. She's the one that is dead. This is the one child that went missing on allegations of kidnapping. You know, somebody, three Mexicans, kidnapped you. Now that story was far fetched because who the hell is three Mexicans gonna kidnap you? Even if you said three black men, three Chinese men, I don't even know. White men, it doesn't matter.、Uh, they don't want your ass, for Christ's sake. They took your bloody car and shot you along the roadside. They don't want no children either. What the hell do they want children for? You had your son with you. That is proof they did not want children, because they would have sold that child for the highest bidder. So proof they didn't want children. And why would they want your ass neither?、Uh, kidnap you. And drive around for twenty-four hours, and take your car, and then be nice to drop you off at the hospital. Nice enough to park it in a nice parking spot so it could be found, in good shape, nothing missing. Tires are still on there, everything. Fancy that! What some lovely kidnappers you had! Very thoughtful. Yeah, your story is a joke. At first, it was be- it could be believable. It, you'd be like, "That could happen." I'd very much doubt it. And as we know, what a dumb! You, I think your scratches got you. you your your scratches and your twenty four hour in a coma broke the case. I'm sorry, it broke the case because you went a little too far with the coma part. In and out of consciousness. In and out of consciousness, with a little bump on your head, you are crazy. And they didn't take your son, and your son never ran off, alongside a road. You just woke up with him next to you. No, that wouldn't happen. We know kids; they'd be gone. Quick as that, they run off. They go play. That's what they do. They just go play. They think you're sleeping and having a nap. They don't know the difference. They will run off. No, that's not true. This is why there's no surveillance of this blue truck. There's no evidence this ever happened. People drive in their cars. There's no video. There's no cameras. There's. I'm sure the police have looked. 
along that stretch for any car looking like that or your car or your car passing on that freeway. No, because you wasn't on that freeway, you see. You're on a completely different road heading to Arkansas. So I'm sure they will pick you up along that road. Some, somewhere along that road, you will be picked up by somebody's camera, by a passerby. Somebody just needs to come forward with whatever e evidence they got. Did they have their cam on? Did, were they videoing at the time when they were going? They could have captured this car. Could have. If you do, if you think you saw this car and you've just captured it by accident, video on something along that stretch, the odds are, well, it was dark. It was raining, but I don't know. It might not have been raining in Arkansas. I don't know. But somebody has probably got some footage of something because they always do you just got to dig deep get your brain going you know there's somebody that was along that freeway was along those roads did he stop and get gas somewhere i mean there's tons of gas stations as i know there's i mean hundreds of them but I bet you, we don't know if he stopped for gas. He could have used that gas can. He had to go somewhere and fill that gas can up. Come on. He had to have gone somewhere and fill that gas can up. Now, it's only a tiny little gas can. That couldn't have got him all the way there and back again. Could it? Ten-hour drive? Say your car goes three to four hundred miles a tank? I mean... Could he? Um, I don't know. Could he have gone 10 hours? Driving 10 hours, give and take? You know, five and a half, five hours, five and a half hours, six hours there, six hours back, give and take? You got to have stopped to get gas. You got to have stopped and get gas. Some gas stations got some footage. But as we know, you know, it gets erased. And they might not have it no more. But still, we know he went there. So that's for sure. That is a given. Who we went with there with is anybody's guess. Because right now, Brittany's got an alibi. Her mother. Yes, she has the alibi because her mother said she picked her up the airport around 1-ish in the morning. It was raining. It was horrible weather. When she went to pick her daughter up, they went back to the apartment. She couldn't get in. She had no key because she left it on the car keys. Uh, I don't know why she did that. She left the guy. She just broke up with him. She would make sure she got her house keys, wouldn't you? Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's because she never broke up with him. That's my guess. She never broke up with him. She's lying. And so her mother took her home with her. And then the very next morning, this is where she went over to Joe's place, the brother. But her mother wasn't with her. I don't think her mother was with her. So she must have drove somebody's car. Or she walked. I'm not sure how far distance it is I'm not sure but later that day Brittany was taken back got into her apartment eventually and was in that apartment because her mother said she dropped her off there but where was she where was her where where was she on Saturday she's going to have to count for her every move her every move on Saturday, her every move in the evening of that Saturday. When she don't have no witnesses to prove where the hell she was. Did she have time to go down to Arkansas with him? Did she? 
Hmm. Well, only her mother knows, because her mother says she was with her. And I don't know if her mother's lying or not. I don't see why she would lie. That's her grandchildren. She seems to love them. She's the only one that came out with any love and concern. And she's the one that filed the charges, not her daughter. Her daughter didn't even. Yeah, she went down there, but she didn't really file them. No, she didn't file them. That was a deliberate act because I can't see why. You go down to a police station, and you say. Your kid is missing. She's four years old. She's missing. She. I haven't seen her. I, I, I. Anything could have happened. Anything could have happened. They could have had an accident. They could be in a ditch somewhere. You know anything? I can't see the police not filing a proper report and putting out the word that a child is missing. That don't make sense. No, because she deliberately didn't tell the cops that. We'll see if she told the cops that. We'll see who made that report. That can be easily be、um, questioned by whoever was working that day. Did she ever come and make that report? What did she say exactly? What did she ask for exactly? You know that can be that can be proven. We could get the facts there if they if that was let out. You know, but they're probably keeping that quiet too. Now her mother went down there and said, "Something's not right. Something's not right." See, the mother says, "Something's not right." The child is missing. Let's go back down there. She's like having to drag her daughter back there, drag her back there. But anyway, she got the work done. She got the work done. She got the job done. She got the alert out that her granddaughter is missing. And then, of course, that evening, Darian shows up at the hospital. Eleven something, eleven thirty, something like that, and reports his kidnapping. But who goes to a police? Who goes to a hospital? Um, you could have easily flagged the police. You could easily flag somebody down. Well, he says nobody would give him a ride, but you know, you could have easily flagged. What about your phone? Where was your phone? See, did he have his phone on him? Was his phone dead? Did his phone ever ring? No, his phone was turned off. Of course, his phone was turned off, and the battery taken out. So. Of course it was. There's no location on him. Because he turned his phone off and took the battery out, so he could not be traced. His whereabouts could not be traced on his mobile phone. Because Brittany tried to find his location. Remember, she said that. I'm looking for his location now. She couldn't find it. He's not answering. No, because he turned his phone off and took the battery out. There is no way. And I don't know when he turned his phone back on. Don't know. You know he didn't go nowhere without his phone. You know that, right? He didn't go nowhere without his phone. So, the police will know when that phone was. You know the last message. The last message to him, the last phone call he made, and then after the fact, after the twenty-four hours, when it was active again, see, it went ghost for a while and then went active. See, they've got all that. They've got all that. Okay, guys, what do you think about that part of it?、It's、little recap on Melissa. Little story. What's going on? And we will continue、uh, discussing Malia.、Um, we have photos. We have a little bit of the bringing Melissa home with the plane. I guess it was an honor for them to bring her body home because it seems like this little girl should be saluted, and she deserves it. She well deserves a proper burial.
and a proper farewell. She is being treated with dignity. She was not treated that way in life, but she will definitely be treated that way in death. It's a shame, but that's all they can do. Is comfort this Malia in death. And she will get a very nice funeral. And she well deserves it. She should get it. She's number one in our eyes right now. I know there's many cases out there of, lately of abused children. Two-week-old babies being beat to death. Their ribs broken. Their heads smashed in. They're out there. It's been happening every single day. But Malia... She was four, and she has been missing. And and this elaborate story of the kidnappers, it, it just captured the world's attention, like Chris Watts did. You know, it's something like that. But these other missing, abused, murdered children... And we're just talking about children right now because, you know, there's many adults that have been abused and killed. But the children are innocent. They're innocent, guys. They have done nothing. And they are supposed to be protected by whoever is taking care of them. And these people failed them. Now, what did a two-week-old baby do to you? Cry for something to eat? To be changed? To be hugged, to be kissed, to be, you know, to hear your heartbeat. Is that all they did wrong? No, you did something wrong. You. You, the parent. The foster care parent. Whoever is taking care of these children. Your boyfriends, your girlfriends. There's one in the news. The girlfriend. The stepmother alcohol on her stepdaughter's face and set fire to it. Now, what the hell? You know, there's crazy stories out there that people, what they will do to these children, they hate. Stepmother obviously hated this little girl. It was her daddy's baby. And of course, we don't know what she was doing, but she probably got her her daddy's attention, and she is jealous. See, she was the wicked stepmother. See, you have wicked stepfathers and wicked stepmothers. Now, she set fire to her face. Now, this little girl, I don't know how badly she was burnt, but she probably had no face left by the time she was done. Because she set fire to it. I'm sure she didn't do anything about it. She made sure this little girl has no face left before she did anything. Now, that's no accident. Because they said she poured alcohol on her face and set light to it. Yeah. These little children being beaten to death and put in a bag and thrown in the bushes like trash. Some people dig a hole and give them a little grave and say, they're missing. They're missing. No, they're, most cases, when they're missing, they're dead. Most cases, we have a miracle. We have a miracle, like some children that went missing and were found years later. That's a miracle. But they were presumed dead. But some people do come back from their kidnappers. It's just a matter of time. But most of these children, teenagers, are found dead. But there's always hope when there's nobody. There is hope. She was 
staying away from social media, but today she returned making five Instagram posts about her daughter. But Instagram users are in a tizzy about her previous posts about Darius Vets, her ex fiance. Memories of Malia posted on her mother's Instagram photography page today. The caption saying in part, quote, Although you were taken so early, I am honored to know that only you knew how much I loved you, and no matter what, no giant can take that away. Next to the five posts about Malia is this post. Darian rapping with his brother Joe. That's followed by a dozen or so additional photos of Darian, and Instagram users are reacting. Quote, you might want to delete Darian's pictures off here, don't you think? And quote, please tell me why a man involved with the disappearance of Malia won't be deleted off your page. The response from Britney's page, quote, no, not yet until I find out. Expect murder charges to be brought against Darian Vince at some point. But those charges won't be handed out until the medical examiner confirms the remains are those of Malia. Our Matt Doty has been speaking with officials at the medical examiner's office. He has the latest now on that part of the investigation. A spokesperson with the medical examiner's office says that body found in Arkansas yesterday is here now. But she says a determination on its identity won't be released anytime today. The body that was found in Arkansas yesterday arrived here in Houston at 11.30 last night. Activist Quan LX was there as the plane landed. He's allegedly the only one able to secure the information that led to the whereabouts of the body. It's been a very, very, very rough day. Um, it's been a mentally, spiritually, psychologically draining day. But I just want to say to everybody here in the city of Houston, and everybody around the world that has prayed for Malia, she's home. She's back home. Today, a spokesperson with the medical examiner's office confirmed the body is here at the Harris County Forensic Science Center. This is where tests will be performed, and an official determination on its identity is expected to be made. We don't know how long that could take. We've already been told the information won't be released anytime today. For much of the day, we've been trying to connect with some of the people linked to Malia Davis. We've reached out to more than half a dozen of her relatives, many of whom we've spoken with in the past, but were unable to connect with them. A neighbor told us yesterday Malia's mother, Brittany Bowens, moved last week and doesn't know where she is. Outside of her apartment unit, a memorial has been started. It's the last place Malia was ever seen. We also reached out to the Harris County DA's office to find out if it expects that charges will be upgraded against Derry and Vince sometime this weekend. We have not heard back. Okay, guys, that comes an end to this um, video. Um, hope you liked it. A little recap on updates that have been going on since this last month. Um, we, we all shared the videos, we put the word out that this little girl is missing and such a strange story, the kidnapping and all the lies, all the storytelling, the media outbursts, the non-believable story, videos showing, you know, the car and his strange story um, has all come to an end. Malia Davis has been found. Not confirmed, as I said, but we all know it's Malia. She was brought home in a personal jet. They brought Malia home so she can be laid to rest and no doubt in the next coming days maybe Monday the results will be in and will be confirmed until then no further charges have been made against Darion Vince until they have proved this is the body of Malia. And then more charges will be filed in the courts.
and we don't know what his defense is going to be, what's his next story, what's true, what's not. We don't know yet. But we're going to find out, guys. Some of the truth is coming out. Now, who's... Whose fault was it? Who's going to take the rap? Is he going to say Britney had anything to do with anything? We don't know what he's going to say. He sure knows what she's been saying. He sure knows what QX has been saying. You know, he knows all this. He probably knows it all. And they say too that he is worried about his image and what we think about him. Well, I don't think he needs to worry what we think about him. We already know what he did. So there's nothing he can say to us about that. But this child deserves the truth the truth. Why? 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 You disgusting person. You disgust me. You disgust a lot of people. And not just you. We, we, we hate and dislike all criminals that do this to children in such a disgusting manner. And not, did you just dump her like trash? The poor little girl was run over for the grass cutter and violated again in death. This is what you've put this little child through. Rest in peace, Malia. You are home. You are home. And you will be put to rest in your resting place not where your stepfather whoever he is put you but you are home and you are going to rest now little angel rest little angel we all love you and thank you guys for stopping by see you next time I'll leave you with this picture of Malia, such a beautiful picture. May she rest in peace.